Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Higher Maths Revision video. So we're counting down from 100 days to go down to one day to go to your GCSE Maths exam and we've got 89 days to go, so um, we're, we're getting there. Hopefully you find these videos useful. In today's video, we're gonna focus on product of primes, so how to write numbers as a product of primes, and also how to find the lowest common multiple, the LCM, and the highest common factor, the HCF, using those product of primes. If you've got the revision cards, the higher revision cards, card number 61 goes through those, and I hope you find that card useful. Useful. But in this video, we're going to go through how to write numbers as product of primes, also in index form, and then we're going to look at how to use those to find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor. And there'll be some questions for you to try as well. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at product of primes, and we're going to look at how to write numbers as a product of primes, as well as how to find the lowest common multiple and highest common factor using product of primes. Now, every single number, every single whole number that is greater than 1, so 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, is either a prime number or can be written as a product of prime numbers. Now, remember what that means. Product means to multiply together, and primes obviously is your prime numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and so on. And it's important you know those prime numbers. So every single whole number greater than 1, so for instance 2 and above, is either a prime number or you can write as prime numbers multiplied together. So here we've got 72. Now, to write 72 as a product of primes, there's a few different ways you can set this out. I like to do it using a bit of a tree like so. So I start off with the number 72 and I think of two numbers that multiply together to give me 72. So you could choose for instance 9 times 8 or 2 times 36 and so on. I'm going to choose 2 times 36. Now 2 is prime so we circle it whereas 36 isn't prime so we're now going to carry on. So we're going to do two more branches and we're going to think of two numbers that multiply together to give us 36. So I'm thinking 3 times 12 you could do 2 times 18 or 4 times 9. I wouldn't do 1 times 36 because you've still got the 36. So what I would do is I choose any pairs of numbers that multiply together to give it apart from obviously 1 in itself. So I'm going to choose 3 times 12. Now in terms of these numbers 3 is prime so we circle it and 12 is not so we're going to carry on. So let's think of two numbers now that multiply together to give us 12. So I'm going to choose 2 times 6. 2 is prime, so we circle it, where 6 isn't, so we're going to do another two branches. And in terms of two numbers that multiply together to give us 6, I'm going to choose 2 and 3, and they're both prime, so let's circle them. So that means if we do 2, multiply by 3, multiply by 2, multiply by 2, multiply by 3, the answer will be 72. Let's just check it. 2 times 3 is equal to 6, times 2 is equal to 12, times 2 is equal to 24, times 3 would be equal to 72. So that's it. So that means that 72 is equal to, now I'm going to write these in order, I'm going to write 2 times 2 times 2, times 3 times 3. So that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So 72 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So that's 72 is a product of primes, but the question said to give our answer in index form. Now remember we've looked at indices, so 72 would be equal to, we've got 2 times 2 times 2, so that's 2 cubed, and then multiply by it, and we've got 3 times 3, that's 3 squared. So that means that 72 is a product of primes in index form would be 2 cubed multiplied by 3 squared. And that's it. Okay, to give you a bit of practice now, can you write 50 as a product of primes? And can you write it as a product of primes, but also give your answer in index form? Okay, so to write 50 as a product of primes, we think of two numbers that multiply together to give us 50. I could choose 5 times 10 or 2 times 25. I'm going to choose 2 times 25. I'm going to circle the 2. In terms of 25, that's 5 times 5. So let's circle both of those because they're both prime. So it means that 50 is equal to 2 times 5 times 5. And let's just check that. 2 times 5 is equal to 10 times 5 is equal to 50. And if we want to write it in index form, we've got 2 multiplied by, and we've got 5 times 5, that's 5 squared. So that means that 50 is equal to 2 multiplied by 5 squared. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at another question now. So here we've got another question. A number m, so a certain number m, written as a product of prime numbers is 2 multiplied by 3 squared. And we're asked what m is. So whenever we've got this number m, and if we write it as a product of primes, we get 2 multiplied by 3 squared. So if we just work out what 2 multiplied by 3 squared is, that'll tell us what m is. So remember our order of operations. We've got to do our squaring first. So 3 squared is 9. So 3 times 3 is 9. So we've got 2 multiplied by 9, doing the squaring first. Now we're going to do 2 times 9, and 2 times 9 is equal to 18. So that means that the number m would be 18. And we can check that. If we start with 18, and we do, well, think of two numbers that multiply together to be 18. That's 2 times 9, or you could do 3 times 6. I'm going to circle the the two, it's prime. Nine's obviously not prime because three times three is nine, so we're going to do three times three, and if we circle them, we get two times three times three, or two times three squared. So that means that we're right, the number m would be 18, and we just worked it out by doing three squared is nine, and then two times nine is equal to 18, and that's it, so just working out the product of primes. Okay, the next part then says to write the number 10m as a product of primes. Now, 10m, remember that means 10 times m, so that's 180, because 10 times 18 would be 180. 
So you could do a prime factor trade for 180 if you wanted to, and I'll show you that in a second, but there is a bit of a shortcut because we've got 10M. Now M, we were told that M is equal to two multiplied by three squared. So M is two multiplied by three squared. And we're gonna multiply that by 10, and 10 is equal to two times five, because as a product of primes, if we had 10, we would have two times five. They're both primes, so let's circle them both. So 10 is two times five. So that means if we take our two multiplied by three squared, and we times that by two, and we times that by five, that would be 10m. And then we could just write this in index form. So we've got two times three squared times two times five. Two times two is two squared. And then we've got times three squared, and then we've got times five. So 10m would be two squared, times three squared times five and that's it now there was another way to do it remember we said that 10m was 180 if we start off with 180 we could do two times 90 circle the two 90 i'm going to choose nine times 10 uh, nine isn't prime so we're going to do three times three that's equal to nine and they're both prime so let's circle them both and 10 is equal to two times five and then circle those as well so that means that 180 would be two times two times three times three times five so that's two squared times three squared times five and that's what we got and that's it, so you could have done that question either way. Okay, now before we move on to using the product of primes to find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor, I wanna look at this type of question as we're applying our knowledge of product of primes. So here's a question, it says, given that 280 is two cubed multiplied by five multiplied by seven, find the lowest whole number that 280 would need to be multiplied by to give a square number. Now, if we've got a square number, I know that whenever we write things as product of primes, all the powers would have to be even. And the reason is that if we have a square number, that's what we get when we multiply something by itself. So with the product of primes, we'd have to have even powers so that we could share them out equally between the two circles and have a number multiplied by a number to give that square number. So I know here that I would have to multiply this by another two, another five, and another seven. And that would give us a square number, which would be two to the power of four, because two cubed times two is two to the power of four, multiplied by five times five, that's five squared, and multiply by seven squared. And now all the prime numbers have got even powers, and that means we can share them out equally. So we could share these out equally, and we would get two and a two in that circle, and a two and a two in that circle. We would get a five in that circle, and a five in that circle, and a seven in that circle, and a seven in that circle. And that means if we do two times two times five times seven, so two times five is equal to 10, times two is equal to 20, times seven is 140. And in this circle, if we do two times five times two times seven, we get 142. And 140 multiplied by 140 would be equal to 19,600. So if we took our number 280 and we multiplied it by two, by five and by seven, then all the prime numbers would have even powers. And that means then the answer would be, if we took 280 and we multiplied it by two times five and by seven, the answer would be 19,600, which is a square number. So the lowest whole number we could have to multiply 280 by would be two times five, which is 10, and times seven is 70. So if we multiply 280 by 70, we would get a square number. So the lowest whole number that 280 would need to be multiplied by to give a square number would be 70 and that's it and i just done that question knowing that whenever we've got a square number it's what we get when we multiply something by itself so whenever you write numbers as product of primes if they've all got even powers then it's a square number if the question said find the lowest whole number that 280 would need to be multiplied by to give a cube number you would need to have all the prime numbers would have to have powers that are multiples of three so because you would share them out between a number a number and a number so here in this case you'd have to multiply by five squared so that would then be times by five and by five again and seven squared which would be seven times seven so you'd have two to the power of three five to the power of three and seven to the power of three because you'd have to have powers that are all multiples of three remember that could be a power of three, six, nine, and so on. But in this case, the question said, what's the lowest whole number we need to multiply 280 by to get a square number? 70, and that's it. So that's just a useful bit of information that you might need to know in terms of applying your product of primes. Okay, we're now gonna look at how to use product of primes to find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor. Now to do that, I've got two warm up questions for you. Can you please write 92 as a product of primes? And can you do that in a list, but also in index form? And then also, our other one is, can you write 48 as a product of primes? And can you use your calculator to do that? And I'll show you how to do that if you're not sure how do that in a moment okay so write this one as a product of primes without using a calculator do it as a list and then also an index form and can you use your calculator to write 48 as a product of primes okay so to write 92 as a product of primes it's even so i'm going to do 2 multiplied by 46 2's prime so let's circle it 46 that's going to be 2 multiplied by 23 2's prime, so let's circle it. And actually, 23's prime as well, so let's circle that as well. So that means that 92 would be equal to 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 23. And in index form, that would be 2 squared multiplied by 23. And that's it. 
Okay, our next one was to write 40 as a product of primes and to use our calculator. Okay, so let's have a look at our calculators. And I've got a couple of different models here. So here in yellow, we've got the word fact. And that means prime factorization. So it means to write a number as a product of primes. So what you do is you type in 48 to begin with, and then press equals. So your calculator says 48. And then you're going to press, and I see it's in yellow, you're going to press shift, and then you're going to press that button, and then it's going to write it as a product of primes for you. And whenever you do that, it should come up with the answer of 2 to the power 4 multiplied by 3. And that's it, your calculator's worked that out for you. If you've got a different type of calculator, if you've got this one, again, it's in the same place. So you press 48, press equals, and then press shift, and then press the same button, and then it would write it as a product of primes. So if you've got a calculator like this, you're going to type in 48, and then press equals or execute, whatever you want to call it. I call it equals, even though it's exe, execute. And then 48 appears on your calculator display. Then you're just going to press the format button, and then it comes up with a list of standard, decimal, or prime factor. So you go down to prime factor, and then you press equals, or exe and then writes it out for you two to the power four multiplied by three and that's it okay so we've written those numbers as product of primes now let's use that information to then find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor okay so we've got two questions here and it's to work out the highest common factor of 48 and 92 and to work out the lowest common multiple of 48 and 92 so let's write down what our product of primes were to begin with again so we had 48 is equal to 2 to the power 4 multiplied by 3 and we had that 92 was equal to 2 squared multiplied by 23 so we've got our numbers as product of primes and I actually prefer in these questions to write them out as a list so I'm going to do 2 multiplied by 2 multiply by 2, multiply by 2, multiply by 3 for our 48. And for 92, I'm going to write 2, multiply by 2, multiply by 23. I just prefer having them in the list whenever I'm doing these highest common factors and lowest common multiples. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find the highest common factor of 48 and 92. And what we do is we draw two circles like so that overlap, and we're going to do 48 beside one of them and 92 for the other. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a look and see what they've got in terms of the numbers and see where we can put them on in this diagram. So 48 has got 2, multiply by 2, multiply by 2, multiply by 2. And 92 has some twos as well it's got two multiplied by two so they both have two twos so we can put two twos in the middle so that has two twos in the 48 circle and it has two twos in the 92 circle so we've done all the twos for 92 but 48 had two extra twos so we're going to need to put two extra twos over there so we've got two twos in the middle it's because they both have at least two twos and then we've put two extra twos on the 48 side now 48 has got a three so we're now going to put a three over there on the 48 side and 92 has got a 23 so we're going to put a 23 over there on the 92 side so we put all our numbers in the Venn diagram we can just check it in terms of 92 it's got 2 times 2 times 23 perfect and in terms of 48 it's got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 and that's what we want as well now the question said to find the highest common factor so that's what they're both divisible by the, the largest number that they're both divisible by so to find that we look at the numbers in the middle which is a 2 and a 2 and we multiply these numbers together so we're going to do 2 multiplied by 2 and that's equal to 4 so the highest common factor of 48 and 92 would be 4 so to find the highest common factor you multiply the numbers in the middle now the lowest common multiple, that's the first number in the 48 times tables and the 92 times tables. It's going to be quite a large number if you think of the, the 48 times tables and the 92 times tables or the multiples of both of them. It's the first number that appears in both of those lists. And to find the lowest common multiple, you're going to times all of the numbers together in the Venn diagram. So you're going to do 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 23. So let's do that. 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 23. And that would be the lowest common multiple. So let's work this out. 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 23 on my calculator gives me an answer of 1104 so it means the lowest common multiple of 48 and 92 would be 1104 and that's it okay so if you want to find the lowest common multiple or highest common factor of two numbers what you can do is write them as a product of primes you can draw this venn diagram of these circles and then you can put the numbers inside of the diagram so the ones that they share in the middle and the extra ones on the, each of the sides and then to find the highest common factor you multiply the numbers in the middle and for the lowest common multiple you multiply all the numbers together okay to give you one now to practice yourself so can you find the highest common factor and lowest common multiple of 36 and 60 and work that out now Okay, so we want to find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor of 36 and 60. So let's write them as product of prime. So 36 would be, well, 2 times 18 is equal to 36. Circle the 2, it's prime. 18 is not, so now let's do that. So that would be 2 times 9. 2 is prime, so let's circle that. 9 is not. 3 times 3 is equal to 9. They're both prime, so let's circle them. So that means that 36 would be equal to 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3.
Now in terms of 60, well that's going to be equal to, well let's do 6 times 10. Neither of those are prime. 6 and I is equal to 2 times 3, they're both prime. And 10 is equal to 2 times 5, and they're both prime. So that means that 60 is equal to 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5. Now you notice here that I haven't written these in index form just because we're about to find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor, and we're going to put these into our Venn diagrams, our circles. Okay, so I've drawn our Venn diagram, and we've got one for 36, one circle for 36, our circle, oval, <laughs> and we've got one circle for 36 and one for 60. Okay, so so now let's look at the numbers that they share. 36 has got 2 multiplied by 2, and 60 has got 2 multiplied by 2. They've both got two twos, so we can put those twos in the middle. They've both got two twos. Now let's look at threes. 36 has got two threes, and 60 has got one three. So that means we can put one three in the middle, and we can put the extra three on the 36 side. So we've done the twos and the threes, and in terms of the fives, 60 is a five, so we've put that over there. So we've put all our numbers in the Venn diagram. Fantastic. So now let's find the highest common factor. So the highest common factor, so the largest number you can divide both of these numbers by, we multiply the numbers in the middle. So we're going to do 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3. And 2 times 2 is equal to 4 times 3 is equal to 12. So the highest common factor of 36 and 60 is 12. That's the largest number that they're both divisible by. Okay, now in terms of the lowest common multiple, to find the lowest common multiple, we now just need to multiply all the numbers in the Venn diagram. So we're going to do 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5. So we're going to do 3 times times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 and that's equal to 180 so that's equal to 180 so that means the lowest common multiple of 36 and 60 is 180 and that's it and that's it so in this video we've looked at how to find the lowest common multiple and highest common factor using the product of primes and how to write numbers as product of primes i highly recommend the practice questions today because there might be some other questions which might be quite useful for you as well so have a look at the practice questions in the description below and they'll be quite useful for the product of primes and the lowest common multiple and highest common factor and that's it so i hope you found this video useful if you have found it useful please like it and subscribe to the youtube channel also, if you know anyone that might find it useful or even maybe perhaps mention it to your teacher because then it might help them, but also it might just get the video a few more views and so on, okay? So thanks so much. Cheers. Bye.